Hey guys, everything new under the sun. This is uh, the Sunday program, Sunday episode, whatever you want to call it. And uh, we are looking at Gad the Seer, and this one is about Vision 2. Now you know you know I've done the uh, Gad the Seer, uh, the Great Tribulation, which I believe is chapter 14, and Gad the Seer, the second video about the first vision. And so we're going to uh, talk about the second vision here and uh, and look at it and uh, see what it uh can give us insight to, uh, towards uh, as it relates to the Bible, uh, the millennial reign of Christ, and all the good things like that. So first off, and I, I did this review in the, in the first and second video. Um, I probably don't need to go over a lot of it again, um, but uh, Gad was a, uh, a seer or a prophet uh, in the Hebrew Bible, and uh, he was uh, living at the time of King David, one of the personal prophets of King David, actually, uh, in Israel, uh, of Israel, King David of Israel in Israel. And quickly, what is a seer? A seer is the same as a prophet, basically. Someone who predicts future events with 100% accuracy and through whom God speaks to the people. And uh, who was Gad the seer? And uh, basically I already said that the Bible records that Gad was a seer. And so the, uh, the Bible specifically uh, talks about Gad the seer in Chronicles uh, there. Uh, Chronicles, First Chronicles 29 uh, 29, uh, where it's mentioned. You can see in the, the bottom of the Wikipedia article here. And actually, he's mentioned in uh, Samuel as well, Second Samuel. So there's a few places uh, where Gad the Seer is mentioned. And when someone's mentioned in the Bible, that's uh, that's a pretty good endorsement uh, of who they are, that they that they were alive, that they were real, and uh, potentially that they have some truth to tell as well. Again, it's not, it is extra biblical, Gad the Seer is, and his prophecies. Uh, but it's interesting to see where they line up with, with Scripture and with the prophecies in the Scripture uh, specifically. So the book we're looking at is by uh, Ken Johnson. And uh, he uh, put this book together uh, based on Gad the Seer, the, the scripts, the manuscripts, uh, the ancient book of Gad the Seer. And uh, the, the title of it is, uh, the undertitle is referenced in First Chronicles 29.29 and alluded to in First Corinthians 12.12. 12. And Galatians 4.26. Now, uh, Ken Johnson uh, is a great uh, theologian, and he's uh, put out a few books there. Um, and you can find this one on Amazon. Just uh, search for Gad the Seer, and then look who it's written by, uh, Ken Ken Johnson, you can see down here. And I would highly recommend it. This was $10 on Amazon. Um, so uh, support Ken Johnson and um, uh, read, read the whole book. Now, I have only looked at, <clears throat> effectively, uh, the first chapter, uh, Vision 1, the second chapter, Vision 2, and the 14th chapter, which is about um, the Great Tribulation. So that's all I've looked at, and uh, there's a whole bunch, obviously, chapters 3 through 13, um, and a lot more commentary by Ken Johnson as well, so definitely check that out. So what does the second vision speak of, and what are the themes that we're going to be seeing in, in this? Uh, what's what's it all about? Um we're, so we're going to be talking about the regathering, saints to be with God, the millennial kingdom, the reign of Christ, and us on earth, replacement theology, and the judgment of Rome. So these are the themes that we're going to see. So now I'm going to uh, go ahead and read um, some of the words of Gad this year. Um, just some selected words. I'm not going to read everything, um, but just some stuff I want to have a look at, go over. And uh, you know, you, you can uh, purchase this uh, ebook and uh, read the whole thing. And really, uh, really, you know, meditate on it, ponder it, and uh, and uh, match it up with uh, Ken Johnson's commentary, and what you know of, of the Bible yourself as well. So let's get let's get to it here. So the second vision, chapter two. This is about the regathering. After these things, I had a vision from God saying, "Set your face eastward, northward, southward, and westward, and whistle with your mouth as a bird whistles to its young, and say, four corners of the earth, listen to the word of the Lord." Thus saith the Lord, who sits and dwells over the cherubim, Give, 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 take out, take out, take out, my seed that I have sown in you. For the time for the seed has come. For yet a little while I shall collect my seed on the threshing floor, and the threshing floor will be holy. An impure seed will not be found there. Prior to those days my seed was mixed with lentils and barley and fitches, beans and gourds. Millennial Kingdom. And in the end of days, the sower shall be true, and the seed shall be true, and from the seed all the land will be blessed. Be joyful and glad, remnant of Judah and rejected of Israel, for salvation, Yeshua, Jesus, is with the Lord, 
as uh, you shall be a curse and blasphemy to all families of the earth, so shall you be a blessing and grace forever. At that time, no cursed or unholy people will be found among you, for everyone will join you in the covenant, the law, testimony, statutes, and ordinances. And you and they shall have one God, one covenant, one law, one language. And isn't that interesting? One language, uh, if you think about the Tower of Babel and how langu languages were separated, to keep us from uh, building towers to, uh, so that we could become our own gods, basically, or to reach up to heaven ourselves. Um, I, I should leave my commentary to the end. Uh, but it's interesting. I was just thinking about that. For all shall speak in the language of Hebrew. That's interesting. That is, uh, uh, I've heard that said before. I think um, uh, maybe Ken Hoven had, had mentioned that, that maybe, maybe Hebrew is God's language. And that's interesting. Uh, conjecture. Uh, but Gad this year apparently uh, thinks so. The holy language. Blessed are you. It's been revived, by the way, Hebrew, the language Hebrew. And no other language uh, has uh, uh, come back around after thousands of years of uh, non-use. Um, Hebrew is a standout there, and it's it's amazing that they uh, speak Hebrew again. It's prophetic. It's it's miraculous. Uh, Blessed are you, O Israel, who is like unto you, a people saved by the Lord, and he will go before you to fight your wars with your enemies. And then this is where it starts talking about replacement theology, and this is bad, obviously. That's where the church... Um, uh, sort of grabs or uh, assumes all the blessings of Israel, all the promises that God spoke of to Israel. A lot of people say, well, you know, Israel uh, isn't allowed to get those or, or, or uh, you know, all those promises have moved over to the church because, you know, well, for thousands of years, Israel wasn't a nation. Um, so, you know, people had to assume what was happening. But Israel's in the land now. And uh, yes, God meant what he uh, said. When, and, and meant his promises when he promised them to Israel specifically. Not not the church, not the Christians, but Israel specifically. Woe to you, O Edom, that sits in the land of Kittim, Rome, in the north of the Mediterranean Sea. For your destroyers will emerge from a terrible nation, Ottoman Empire, destroyed by the Byzantine Empire. In brackets there. They will not even leave you a remnant. For you have said, I sit on high and only I have... And only I have a covenant with the God of gods. For the Lord chose me instead of his people, for he abhorred them. And his former people despised and rejected, did not truly know the Lord, the Father, because they did not know his image, the Son. We are truly wise and intelligent. We uh, know the Lord and his law. We know his image, the Son, and presence, the Holy Spirit. Thus says the Lord. Because you rose up in pride to brag about the God of gods, know that you will perish in your con uh, conceitedness. For why would you put confidence in man whose life is a, like a vapor which begins in the morning and is gone by noonday, placing him to sit beside God? For it is not you whom I knew formerly, and where is the bill of divorce of my people that you said would be a prey? Show it to me. A judgment of Rome, it's speaking of here. Your corpses will fall among my people. O oh, jealous Yahweh, come out, come out of your place and smite Edom, consume them. Come to Zarephath, come to Sarah, Sepharad, come to Ashkenaz, come to uh, Garmania. They shall come and fall in the lowest pit in destruction and in the shadow of death. For your mouth will fail you and no one will help you. Michael stands up. At the end of days, Michael, the great prince, will stand up in war like a whirlwind against Samuel, the prince of this world. Isn't that interesting? A name to the prince uh, of this world. There's princes, uh, there's powerful beings that we don't see all around us. And uh, that's just an amazing thought in and of itself, that there are spiritual beings, spiritual warfare going on right around us um, that we can't see with, with our eyes. Um, <clears throat> and so Michael stands up against one of these, uh, Samuel, the prince of this world, to put him under his feet in the wind of the Lord, and it shall be eaten up, for the Lord has spoken it. Now, speaking of the millennial kingdom, at the end of days, the robbed will overcome the robber, and the weak, the strong, truly, and in righteousness. Your God is your Savior. O Israel, with him you will be saved, for he is a merciful God. He will not abandon you, for you shall keep on doing all that I commanded you in the law of Moses, my servant. 
So we get into commentary here. Again, this is by Ken Johnson, and, and he's putting his thoughts over top of um, some of the things. So I'm just going to, again, just uh, look at a few things here, <clears throat> bits, bits of his prophecy here, and uh, we'll, we'll see, what, uh, see what we think about it as we read through it. In the second vision, Ken says, we see Israel regathered from the four corners of the earth. This is happening now, but at its completion, all of Israel will know the Lord and the Messiah. And that is kind of the purpose of the seven-year tribulation to um, bring Israel around to knowing the Messiah, Jesus, to recognize him as Messiah this time around because they didn't recognize him uh, the first time around when he came, when uh, the, the Jews and uh, the Romans um, basically put him on a cross. Then there will be a messianic kingdom. Ezekiel 4 explains what is meant in verse 7. The plants mentioned in that verse are those that are ground to powder to make bread, while the true seed will live forever. And Ezekiel 4, 9 says, Take thou also unto the, the wheat and barley and beans and lentils and millet and fitches, and put them in one vessel and make the make thee bread thereof. Before the messianic kingdom there will be kingdoms arise that teach replacement theology, that they have replaced Israel, that's what I spoke of, they think that God only works through them and he will no longer have anything to do with the nation of Israel. We know that replacement theology is not true because Israel has been reborn as a nation. Uh, there have been over 50 biblical prophecies fulfilled since Israel's rebirth. See ancient prophecies revealed for details on over 500 Bible prophecies. That's another book he's, he wrote. Actually, I'm, I'm seriously thinking about getting that um, to do some studies on that as well online. I think that would be very informational because he goes through um, all the, the different uh, types of prophecy in the Bible and uh, really gives you a background, kind of a university uh, teaching, if you want, about uh, prophecy and then uh, goes and lists all the prophecies as well. So that's a pretty neat book as well. So you can check that on Amazon.com as well. And he says, we see two of these kingdoms in chapter one, the camel, old Edom, and the donkey. Voice of God on earth. In verse uh, 21, they each have a man who sits in God's place. Islam has imams uh, and the Mahdi. And the Roman Catholics have a pope. Each supposedly has God-ordained authority to add their ideas and traditions to what the scripture says. So these uh, religions made by man uh, have appointed these particular leaders who can override scripture in some cases, whereas uh, the Christians obviously... Um, uh, Christians, that's a, that's a broad term, obviously. But the Christians, the, the non-Catholic anyways, um, most of us uh, sort of mainline uh, Protestant, I guess you'd call it. Uh, yeah, Protestant. Um, don't have these these leaders who can basically override the Bible uh, where, they, where they see fit. Uh, each supposedly has a God-ordained authority to, that adds ideas and traditions to what their scripture says, whether the Quran or the Bible. Sometimes they even say their teachings are equal to or even superior to the holy books. But God says they are simply mortals with no authority to do so. God asked in verse 21, Why would anyone listen to them? They do not sit in God's seat, nor have his authority. Some non-Trinitarians, non uh, people who don't believe in the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, uh, might think this refers to the Messiah sitting next to the Father. But the Messiah is immortal, and David acknowledges the Trinity of God in chapters 8 and 12. So that is uh, uh, pretty interesting here. Uh, let's see. Let's go to um, the last uh, last piece here, uh, speaking about uh, Gog Magog war, because this is inter interesting. Ezekiel thirty eight, obviously, Ezekiel thirty eight thirty nine describes a war where Russia, along with Iran, Germany, and other nations, invades Israel, and God destroys them all with fire on the mountains of Israel. Now, that would be an amazing day when that happens, and I think that's coming uh, very shortly in the next uh, pr probably ten, twelve years, if not earlier than that. Um, could be imminent. Uh, this should be interesting. There are so many corpses that Israel has to make a national cemetery for them. It will be called Haman Gog, Ezekiel 39.11, that's spoke of, spoke of in. Verse 25 seems to be pointing to this event, but notice it seems to be the camel and the donkey, or Rome and Islam. Ezekiel reveals Russia leading a coalition of Germany, Iran, Turkey, northern Sudan, Libya, and the Isles, and many other nations. Gad reveals uh, Zarephath, Seraph. Sepharad, Ashkenaz, and Garmania. Zer uh, Zarephath is a city in Lebanon. Uh, Sepharad is the Hebrew name for the country of Spain. 
Ashkenaz is Germany. Garmania is uh, either southern Russia, Germany, eastern Europe, or Sudan, Egypt. Now, Garmania, the first thing I thought was Germany, because um, uh, it's, it's called uh, transliteration, I think. Uh, maybe that's the wrong word, but anyways, that's kind of the first thing I thought of when I, when I saw that. He goes on, It is interesting that the church father Hippolytus said that the revived Roman Empire created by the Antichrist will be pulled together from four pieces. Could he have been referring to uh, the book of Gad the Seer? Isn't that interesting? And uh, it speaks of the tribulation. At this time, Michael stands up to war with Satan. We see this in Daniel 12.1 and Revelation 12.7. After this time, we have the millennial reign of Christ, for the, the thousand-year reign of Christ. And that's going to be an amazing time. So that is that for uh, the commentary, and I hope you kind of just listen to that and uh, kind of read between the lines, put your own thoughts together there. It's it's fascinating stuff, and, and there's so many things that could come out of it, really. Um, here's an overview of the chapters that are in uh, Gad this year. Um, so like I said, I looked at chapter 1, the first vision, chapter 2, the second vision, and 14, the Great Tribulation. But it talks about um, a whole bunch of other things. Uh, David's sin, uh, David's sermon, um, has a Psalm 145, Psalm 144 in there. Um, uh, apparently with uh, an extra verse in there, so that's interesting. A lot of interesting study there um, that, that Ken also has commentary on. He's got commentary on all of it. So it's a pretty interesting read. It's a pretty short read. Um, Gad this year, uh, the book uh, it is, it is relatively short, all things considered, so it's definitely an easy read, and, uh, and Ken has lots of uh, great uh, commentary on it. So again, guys, I will leave it there. Uh, thanks for watching. You can get this book on Amazon, like I say, just uh, search for Gad this year, and look for Ken Johnson, support Ken Johnson. I think the book is $9.99 or something like that for the ebook, and that's what I went ahead and got, and uh, yeah, definitely check it out. And uh, that's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of it. And uh, as always, we will see you guys in the next video.